Thanks for joining us online. I'm Kevin Hurd with KevinTalksTech.com here again for another Kevin Talks Tech episode. As you can see, we've moved away from our usual setting at the tech desk and now have a new place that we're at. However, we have not lost our television set, which is actually very good because today I'm going to be introducing you to the world of Google Chromecast. Now, as you may have remembered and seen from past episodes, we've talked about the Roku streaming player, we've talked about WD Live, but we haven't had a chance to dive into Chromecast yet. Today, I'm going to be showing you the unboxing of this. We're going to be looking at how to set it up, and then of course, I'll give you my review of it as well. One selling point that I really like about the Chromecast is this is one of the cheapest streaming devices that I've found out there. $35 for this, that's the price I was able to pick this up for. It does pretty much all the same things that a Roku can do except it does have a lot less channels on it. Um, a little bit more limited I should say actually in some of the features but still a great price point and some great features to talk about. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open this box up right here. We'll do an unboxing for you. When we open it up, very sleek, very simple, and that's one thing that I notice right away too when I do open up the Chromecast is simplicity. I feel like Google really wanted to make a product that felt like it was simple, that anybody could use, that was cost efficient. You can see right on the side, very simple instructions on how to get started. Simply plug it in, switch your input, and then go ahead and set it up with the website that they give you here. And then this is the actual Chromecast device itself. And when you really look at it too, one thing you'll notice right away, it's not that much bigger than a USB flash drive. And I think that's one thing that I really like too. The Roku box, the WD Live boxes really aren't that big either. But this again is something that's so small, so simple that you can easily plug right into your HDMI port on your TV. When you open up the box, here's what you get inside. Here's an AC adapter with a USB plug-in on the back. This is going to connect to another USB cord that is going to again connect to the Chromecast. One thing I should also point out is the Chromecast does come with a micro USB port on the back. There is a cord that's included as well when you get the um, Chromecast. You hook that up to the back of the Chromecast and then you can power it with that AC adapter or you also have the ability, if your TV has this anyway, if your TV has a USB port on the back you can also power it by plugging it into the USB port on your television set too. And then you know the weird thing about this is that uh, I ran into this problem with my TV but the Chromecast is actually shaped in a way that it can't fit into the HDMI port on the back of my TV. And so what they give you is an HDMI extender right here, a little bit thinner on top so this part would plug into your TV and then you can plug in the Chromecast down here. All right, so let's talk about how this thing is now set up. I've actually already actually gone through and hooked it into the TV just to make this demonstration a lot easier for us. This is the actual Chromecast device right here. A couple different components running into it. You have the HDMI extender that's plugged into the HDMI out part of the Chromecast. That runs into the back of the TV just like this into one of the available HDMI ports. You can see I've got a few ports on the back that are available, so I've connected it that way. Now if your TV actually isn't shaped weird like mine, you could connect the Chromecast directly to the HDMI port up here, but that HDMI extender is very nice to have, gives you a little more flexibility. And then to actually power the Chromecast, what I've done is I've hooked the USB cable into the back. It's got a micro USB connection down here. And two ways to do this, you can use the AC adapter and plug it directly into the wall for power or if your TV does have an available USB port on the back, you can see that's this one right here. I've actually gone through and hooked it up to the USB port on my TV and that's going to power the Chromecast device. Alright, so now that we've got the Chromecast connected to the TV, it's receiving power. What I've now done is I've gone to my TV and I've used the source button on my remote to switch to the appropriate HDMI port that the Chromecast is hooked up to, in this case HDMI 3. And this is a screen that comes up. This is a setup screen and what it's asking me to do is go to google.com backslash Chromecast backslash setup and I can go in there and go ahead and get this Chromecast set up. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Now you can do this on an Apple device, you can do this on an Android device, you can do it on a PC. We're gonna go ahead and do it on this Apple device. So this is available in the App Store and we actually need to get the Chromecast app. I've already got it as you can see. So let's go ahead and click on it. We're gonna open it up and what it's doing right now is it's scanning for available Chromecasts in the area. What I need to do is I need to get this all set up so I'm going to go to set up a new Chromecast. It's now asking me to go to my iPad's Wi-Fi settings and select 
the new Chromecast. So what I need to do is look for the same device that I see on the TV screen, which in this case is Chromecast 6175. I'm going to go into my Wi-Fi settings. I'm going to find the Chromecast and I'm going to go ahead and click on it and then connect to it. Once you go ahead and set your Wi-Fi up, with, once you go ahead and click on the Chromecast within your Wi-Fi settings, it now tells us we found a new Chromecast. We're going to be selecting a network for the Chromecast and giving it a unique name. And it's going to give us a, a unique name to identify our Chromecast by. So why don't I go ahead, I'm just going to call it Kevin. Okay, so now that we've got everything all hooked up into the TV, we've got the Wi-Fi settings all entered in correctly. Now we've powered up the Chromecast and it's coming on. So let's go ahead and take a look at what you see when you turn on your television for the first time. Beautiful, beautiful HD display right here. It gives you the time in the corner, tells you the name of your uh, Chromecast that you've got connected in case you do have more than one Chromecast connected. And then of course your Wi-Fi network as well will let you know how good your signal is. So not a lot here on the screen to work with. The meat of the program is actually going to be on your phone, your PC, um, your wireless device that you're using with the Chromecast. So here it is. I'll give you a little look at what you can see on the iPad right now. I've only got a couple options because I've only got a couple of the apps working with it, YouTube and then Netflix. So I can stream either one of these using my iPad and they'll show up on the TV using Chromecast. So let's do a little demonstration with YouTube right now. You go into the YouTube app just like this. I'll just go ahead, I'll click on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this thing where I can uh, go up in the corner of the screen, choose to display it on Kevin, which is the name of this Chromecast, and then you can see it show up on the TV right here behind me. This again is the YouTube channel. Looks great up here, tells you the name of the, uh, the program that you're watching, the date it was published, how many people have watched it. And so yeah, just a fantastic, great experience, kind of weird seeing this right side side by side with me. Now one other feature that I think is definitely worth mentioning is the ability to broadcast what's on your Chrome browser on your PC or Mac and have it go to your Chromecast which is connected to your TV set. So basically in order to do this, in order to see the videos, the pictures, the pages that appear within Chrome, you do need to have the Chrome browser installed on your PC or Mac. This is just like Firefox, it's just like Internet Explorer. And then you'll also need to download another extension for the Chromecast as well in order to do this. Once you've got both of those, what you can do is go into your Chrome browser, pull up a page, and when you have that extension installed, you're going to go ahead and see a little button that appears in the upper right hand corner of the screen and it's right up here in the corner. You can see this is the Chromecast button and you're going to go ahead and you're going to click on that and when you do so, there's going to be a tab that comes up that asks you which device you want to cast this tab to. I'm going to go ahead and click on Kevin. And then when we go over to our TV set, voila, there it is. You can see that it comes through, looks absolutely beautiful in high definition. This is being casted from the Chrome browser on your computer and then shows up through Chromecast on your TV. One of my favorite features, I think, of the Chromecast box so far, something that I have not been yet able to figure out how to do with the Roku box as well as the WD Live box. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the pros and cons of picking up a Chromecast. First, I want to go ahead and start with the pros because I think this device really, really does have a lot of pros. There's a lot of really good things about it. First cost, I think, is huge, $35. I mean, when you compare that to the cost of a Roku player, a WD Live box, we're really, really talking about a good solid value here, especially since it can stream many, many of the channels that those other devices can do as well. And really when you think about it, I mean, Netflix and Hulu Plus, HBO Go, I mean, these are some of the prime streaming services that are out there. And if you didn't have these, I really don't know if you could have a big sellable product. So I think that's a big plus right there, $35. The other thing that goes along with that is the fact that it does have a lot more in terms of channels out there than we originally saw when it came out. Like we said, it added the Red Bull TV. You've got Netflix and Hulu Plus, which are standard, Pandora. YouTube is great because you can't get YouTube on the Roku right now. Um, Plex, Songza, Post TV. I mean, really a lot of options and knowing Google, I'm sure there's a lot more options that are going to be coming with this. So that would be a benefit right now. And then also the other thing that would go along with this is being able to cast through your Chrome browser. That's again something that we don't have an option with in the Roku player. We don't have an option really with in the WD Live box as well to open up your browser and to stream to your TV set. So that's another thing that I really like too. When we talk about the cons, uh, we can build off of 
maybe something that was a pro and that is the fact that yes this does have a lot of channels to it right now for a 35 dollars device but it still doesn't have all the channels that you get in the roku box and even the wd live box does have more channels available and by channels we're talking about all these different services that you can use to stream to your tv right now though again for 35 dollars that's still not too much of a huge con the other thing that might be a little bit of a con at this point too is being able to hook up an older TV to a device like this. Again, this only has an HDMI connection to it. You could probably go through some converters as well. But when we think about the Roku box, one thing that I really like about the Roku is if you don't have HDMI on your television set, if you've got one that's older, it does have these composite ports available so you can still hook up your TV. Kind of a nice feature. You know, overall though, just a really fantastic device, only with a few cons out there. The one downside to this that I should mention too is I haven't been able to find this in all the stores that I've gone into, so you may have to check a couple different places to be able to get your hands on this, but I would check it out. Again, it's called the Chromecast from Google. I picked it up for $35. Now, if you wanna see how this compares to some of the other devices that we've rated in the past, such as the Roku boxes, the WD Live box, we have those reviews as well as write-ups posted right now on kevintalkstech.com. And if you want to get the full write-up on this device, the Chromecast, you can also find that on our website at kevintalkstech.com. want to thank you so much for popping in and joining us here today. If you've got any questions, be sure to please leave some in the comments for us. And the other thing I always ask in every video is please, please, please give a subscription to our page. It's the way that I can stay connected. It's the way that I can know who's watching our videos and respond to your comments and questions too. So please click that subscribe button and be sure to like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter. All those details are on kevintalkstech.com. Thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you again next time for another kevintalkstech.com.